Hello everyone, welcome back to Machine Learning. I am your host Neeraj. Today we will discuss uh, model selection and curse of dimensionality. Let's begin our discussion with model selection. As you might remember, in polynomial curve fitting problem, we had an underlying ground truth which is shown in uh, green curve here and also we had access to uh, certain points sampled from this underlying curve. So we are given a set of input output pairs. Inputs are uh, given as x1 to xn and outputs are given as t1 to tn. Now using these input output pairs, we want to fit a polynomial model that is good approximation of the underlying sine curve. So that whenever a new input is presented to us, we should be able to predict the target value with sufficient accuracy. So in order to solve this problem, First, we selected a polynomial of order m to fit the data. Now we have certain points x and their corresponding target outputs. So we, uh, in order to estimate the unknown weights w0 to wm for the uh, fitting polynomial, we will use these points and compute the outputs y, x and w. And once these outputs are computed, we can compute the error between uh, the actual target variable and the model predicted variable. Initially to start with, you can start with uh, uh, a random weights and then uh, compute uh, the output uh, models output for each input and then compare it with uh, the uh, actual uh, target variable to see how much your error is. So you can formulate this as a, a least square problem and you can uh, compute the error for each point, square it and some uh, average the error across all points and try to minimize this over the uh, by trying different values of the uh, weight vector until you uh, achieve sufficient accuracy or the minimum error. Now, once you have trained this model on the training set, that is the set of the points for which your input and output are available, you want to test it on a separate uh, points which were not included in the, in the training set. So those separate points on which the model's performance is evaluated is known as a test set. But let's say if you have a very good model which gives you zero error on the training set, Will you select that model to uh, to check it ch check its performance on the test set, or will you select it as a uh, as a good model? So let's let's see uh, in case of overfitting. So in case of overfitting, we have used a very high order polynomial, and it fits through exactly through all of the training points. But as you can see, this red curve, it's not a good approximation of the underlying uh, green green curve. So that means only the error on the training points is not a good criteria for model selection. If we select the model using this criteria, then we are we usually are uh, going to get an overfitted model. So in order to avoid that, we will split our uh, training set into training and validation set. So what validation set is, we will keep some points from the training set aside to evaluate the model's performance. And once the model performs best on the validation set, we will select that, that model as a, as a good, good model of uh, fit uh, for the training data. Okay, so how should we uh, uh, split our uh, given available points into training validation and test sets? So first you create a training set, which is the set of points used to estimate the parameters of the model. So let's say we, we take, usually we take, let's say 70% of the available points as a training set. Now you select a particular order of the polynomial, let's say m equals to 2, then estimate the model coefficients using the training set by minimizing the least square error. Once you have estimated the uh, best uh, fitting weights, then you compute the error between the model outputs and the true, val uh, true values uh, for the points in the validation set. So, so you can compute, let's say you kept 20% of the points for the validation. And then you select the model that gives the best validation performance. You do not select the model that gives you best performance of the training set, but you, you use the model uh, that gives you best validation performance. The reason is simple. You have fitted the model on the training points. Obviously it has given minimum error, but what you want is, you want to use those points which were not included in estimating the parameters of the model and see how that performs. If the model performs well on unseen points which were not included in the training, you assume that that model uh, will perform uh, uh, well on any of the uh, input points. So finally, uh, you compute the error for the points in the test set. 
so this is your uh, 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 a, a general a very general model selection criteria that you split your available set of uh, input output pairs into training validation and test set you train the parameters of the model on the training set you compute the error uh, on the points in the validation set and then you select the model so uh, here uh, in 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 first uh, in first iteration let's say you used you used m equals to 2 so you use second order polynomial you computed certain error and you selected uh, that model then you change m equals to 3 then you again compute the error on the validation set and uh, by doing so you will have error for the validation set on for each value of candidate m and then you will select that m which gives you the minimum error on the validation set so in this way you you will select the polynomial order and once you have selected the polynomial order uh, you also know the corresponding weights because you have already trained it on the training set you use that model to evaluate the performance on the test set okay let's now uh, move on to a concept uh, on to the concept of cross validation let's say you have very limited data and you can't partition the data into separate training validation and test set so in 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 those scenarios what you uh, do is you use uh, cross validation so what cross validation is so you have let's say n points you divide those n points into bins of equal sizes let's say you have 100 points and you want to do four cross uh, cross validation so what you will do is uh, you will uh, divide uh, those 100 points into bins of 25 each. So you have 25 points here, 25 points here, 25 points here, 25 points here. So you will use one of those bins, points in one of those bins as your validation set and rest of the points as your training set. So in run one, let's say your first bin uh, is, is your validation set and rest of the three bins, points in the three bins are used as the training set. In second run, you will uh, use second uh, bin as the uh, as the validation set and rest of the bins as training sets and in similar way you will pass through uh, in similar way you will give chance to uh, the points in each bin to become as the validation set so you average the performance over all these runs to select the model so in nutshell what you uh, want to do is you just do not want to select the model that performs best on the training set you want to select that model that gives you best performance on the validation set and if you have limited set of points that you cannot create a separate validation set you make use of cross validation all right that's it about model selection now we will uh, discuss uh, an important uh, topic which is uh, curse of dimensionality so curse of dimensionality is nothing but uh, it's it's a in uh, in intuitive perspective, it's a way of saying that as you increase the dimensions of the data set, your points become sparse in space and that creates a lot of problems while uh, computing distances and using algorithms like k nearest neighbor and so on. So let's let's try to understand this. Let's say you have only one dimensional data set. So your uh, each uh, data set only has only one feature. So you can easily partition this uh, one, dim uh, one dimensional space into different bins. Right. So let's say you have one, two, three bins here, and all your points will lie on this line. But if you go, if you have a, if you add second dimension, then instead of three partitions, you need to do nine partitions. So in order to, uh, so your data here, you are uh, in one dimensional case, your data can lie either here, 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 or uh, maybe here. But in two dimensional space, the data has lot of options to uh, move around. So your points can be here, here, and so on. So the, uh, the complexity increases. Similarly, if you go for the three-dimensional uh, case, the options for the points to be spread out in space increases. So your, uh, you, so your space expands and your points can go far away from each other. So what curse of dimensionality states that as you increase the dimensions of the data, your points become sparser in space and that leads to the requirement of extra uh, memory space in your computer to store the points to compute the distances and that also uh, creates problem for uh, algorithms like nearest neighbor or other algorithms that depend uh, depend on that are sensitive to distance measures so that's why we need to 
reduce the dimensions of the data in, in certain uh, scenarios. For example, in gene expression data sets, we have um, data for, uh, let's say, 20,000 genes and so on. But not all of the genes are important for uh, certain uh, functional uh, biological uh, processing. So what we do is we apply certain dimensionality reduction techniques, for example, uh, principal component analysis, to select the most varying dimensions or most important dimensions. And then we run algorithms only using that low dimensional data set. So curse of dimensionality in nutshell means that as you increase the dimensions, you have more space to fit the points and the points are usually not closely packed in high dimensional space. They are far from each other because they have a lot of space to move around. And in, in one dimensional space, you have only one variable to pay. But in three dimensional space, let's say, if you change one of the three dimensions, the point can go very far away. So that, that way, the points have a lot of space to play around. So that's why we, uh, in certain applications, we want to use dimensionality reduction techniques to uh, come up with a low dimensional uh, uh, feature space. I, I would not use terms like you know, low dimensional manifold and so on because that we will use when, when we will uh, understand about manifold learning and so on. But as of now, just understand that as you increase the dimensions, your points become spread out in space. That's all for today. Uh, next, we will discuss about entropy and mutual information and uh, how we will use in uh, these in, in the context of machine learning. So stay tuned to the channel. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe it, hit the like, uh, like button and click on the bell icon so that whenever we upload a new video, you get a new notification. Thank you so much.